Shalom Aleichem, Malachi Asharet, Malachi Elyon, Melech Malachi Amnachi, HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Shalom Aleichem, Malachi Asharet, Malachi Elyon, Melech Malachi Amnachi, HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Shalom Aleichem, Malachi Asharet, Malachi Shalom, everyone. Shalom. Well, it happened this week. Maybe you saw it. It somehow still surprises me every year, but as I was walking through Central Park on my new commute to work from the west side, I saw the first flowers. Now, I have really been paying attention because I'm going every day, and it's so weird because you see these branches, and they're dry and dead-looking, and each year I kind of think, I don't know, is it really going to happen this year again that it's going to actually just burst into bloom? And I saw like these magnolia flowers and I just couldn't believe it because still most of the park is a little bit dry, but a few of those first blooms came out and it reminded me of what is to come. And it feels very fitting as we are entering the month of Nisan, which is the month of Passover, of course, that we are starting to feel the, wor the world's rebirth. And I think it was very fitting that our ancestors made Nisan the first month of the year, even though you'd think it was supposed to be back when we celebrated Rosh Hashanah, which is the new year. But that's not the way they start the mark, the beginning of the year. It's really in this month when the world seems to come back to life. And so I think about the possibilities of renewal that happen on a cycle of the year, but also on the cycle of every single week, the possibility of renewal of Shabbat. I want to thank um, our Shamashim who greeted you as you came in. Um, I want to introduce all of us who are up here. We have a big crew, um, Rabbi Mo Salf, Rabbi Dan Ross, Rabbi Ari Lorge, our guest, Rabbi Rachel Isaacs, our cantoral intern, Beth Reinstein, cantor Dan Mutlu, our amazing musical team, on our BIMA, our president, Dr. Shawnee Silverberg. I want to thank our AV and security and ops and all the people who make this possible in here. And, and in particular, to be able to be joined not just by all of you here, but, but everyone who's joining us by live stream. So we want to say Shabbat Shalom to all of you who are joining us from wherever you are. I want to welcome our confirmation class that's visiting from Kansas. Congregation B'nai Yehuda, led by their rabbis, Stephanie Kramer and Caitlin Brasner. It's so great to have you. And now that you know who we are, um, we want to make sure that we actually create a sense of community in this space. If you're visiting or one of our long timers, so if you take a few moments, please reach across the aisle and wish someone a Shabbat Shalom.
I love the buzz of greeting. And now to bring more warmth into our sanctuary, I'd like to call up Elizabeth Sharpless and Lisa Kixalis to help us bring in the light of Shabbat. You can please join us in the blessings. two adult Benot Mitzvah who will become, who will celebrate and marking this this week and next Shabbat as well. We continue with Psalms for Kabbalat Shabbat. On your order of service, you can find Shiru Ladonai. Also, I think it's on page 13 if you'd like to look at the Hebrew. Please join with us. Shiru Ladonai Psalm 29, help us enter deeper into Shabbat, page 18, or you can find the words on your order of service. Kavod v 
are a little more open to receive the Sabbath bride. Page 20 and 21, we'll sing verses 1, 2, 5, and 9. And as we come to that last verse, if you're able, we invite you to rise and in body or spirit, greet the Sabbath bride.
Having welcomed Shabbat, we continue on page 146, 146 in our Sidurim, and we remain standing for our call to worship. <laughs> Please be seated. We continue on page 147 together. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Bidvaro Ma'ariv Aravim, Bechokhma Poteach She'arim, Uvitvuna Meshane Itim, Umachalif Et Hazmanim, Um Sader Et HaKochavim, Bemishmer Tehem Barakia Kirtsono, Bore Yom Velayla, Golel Or Mipne Choshech, וחושך מפני אור. אביר יום מי לילה, ומבדיל בין יום ובין לילה, אדוני צבאות שמו, אל חי וקיים, תמיד ימלוך עלינו לעולם בעת. ברוך אתה אדוני. our youngest members of our congregation. I don't know if that's her, but <laughs> Sadie Eleanor Hinkus, if you'd please come and bring your parents to Brian and Mia so we could give you a very special blessing in front of the ark and give you your Hebrew name in this community.
Please rise. Wow, Sadie, you're here. Mazel tov. You are here in front of all of these people in this community and also across the world on live stream for a very special blessing tonight. And just think, this could be the first of many, we hope, blessings on this Bema in this community. And people have traveled far and wide to be with you tonight. You have family visiting all the way from Utah, Maryland, and even all the way out on Long Island. It's a very long island. They came here to see you. And it was not so long ago that your sister Emma was here standing with your parents, actually being held by your parents, to receive her blessing. And so it's very fitting that your parents give you tonight your very own Hebrew name. And your Hebrew name is Sarah. Sarah. Sarah means princess in Hebrew. You are a princess. And Sarah was the very first Jewish woman. Now, that was many, many years ago. But going back just a few generations, we call to mind your great-great-aunt for whom you are named, Sadie. That is your great-great-aunt, Eleanor. And she was a strong woman. She was astute like you. And the, the most important thing to know about Eleanor was that she really cared for people. People were very important to her. She loved to read, but as part of her personality, she wanted to know what you were reading. That was what was important to her. So can I ask you a question, Sadie? What are you reading? What are you reading these days? Well, pick, what is it? Pika Who. Pika Who. That's a good book. That's a good book. Well, if you look at your parents' faces, you can also read their love and their hope and their wishes for you this day. And that's why they named you for your great-great-aunt Eleanor, because they are linking your spirit with hers so that all your life, when you do great things, her goodness will come out too. Her spirit and her good name will live on. And so your parents hope and wish for you that you will be the embodiment of her good character and her good name. And so it is our privilege and our joy to give you today our most ancient blessing, Sadie, so that it goes well for you this day and every day from until now for your life. Can I, can I hold you? Are you ready? Here we go. We're going to give you a blessing. Yevarech Adonai Bishmerecha Ken Yehiratso May God bless you and protect you. Ya'er Adonai Pana Velecha Bichunecha Ken Yehiratso May God shine God's face unto you and be gracious to you. Yisa Adonai Pana Velecha Ve'asem lecha shalom Ken yehi May God turn God's face to you and grant you everything that you hope. I know, just a few more moments. A lifetime of blessing and a lifetime of peace. Amen. Just in time. Mazel tov. With that kind of joy, we're going to sing about liberation. We're going to turn to page 152, 152 for Micha Mocha, especially in this new month of Nisan. We rejoice. <laughs> Dora 
We continue by asking for God's sheltering presence, Hashki Venu, you can find on your order of service. Yeah. Uh-huh. 
tefillah begins on page 155, 155. I invite you to please rise. Sifatai tifta Ufi yagi Tilate ha Adonai Sifatai tifta Ufi yagi Tilate We continue praying silently, either using the words of the Sidur through page 167 where the Amidah concludes or the prayers within us, the prayers that we have in our hearts. You may remain standing or be seated.
ניצול שוני מרע, ושפתי מדבר מרמה. ולמכל אליי נפשי תידום, ונפשי כעפר לכל תהיה אלוהי. אלוהי, אלוהי נצור לשוני מרע, ושפתי מדבר מרמה. ולמכל אליי נפשי תדום, ונפשי כעפר לכל תהיה אלוהי. אלוהי, אלוהי נצור לשוני מרע, ושפתי מדבר מרמה. ולמכל אליי נפשי תדום, ונפשי כעפר לכל תהיה אלוהי, אלוהי, בטח, בטח Rabbi Bokhtal, this is also one of my favorite times of the year. Earlier this week, spring officially arrived on the calendar and with it, as if on schedule, a mixture of slightly warmer temperatures, a little bit of rain, and yes, many a daffodil and tulip green popping out on Park Avenue and seemingly everywhere around our city. It's a time of hope, and I, for one, will take every minute of it. I wish that all of us could be guaranteed a spring-like resolution for the challenges, the winters we encounter. We know this is not always the case, but we do not give up hope. And we do not give up on those who we love, who are struggling with pain or loss, illness, and issues of abuse and addiction. Instead, we stand by them, and we say to them, we are with you, and we love you. We try our best to be their sunshine. And so we pray now for those in need of healing, paying special mention to those connected to our community, Stan Chadsey, Eddie Agnes, and Pamela Swerdlick, and I'll invite you to say aloud or in your heart names for those you are praying for this Shabbat. 
for all of them and for all of us. We pray our prayer for healing. You can find it in the middle of our order of service. We also, at this time of our service, take time to recognize the blessings that are in our lives, the flowers, if you will, blooming in our midst. And so if I say something that is true for you, I'll invite you, whether you're here or elsewhere, using our live streaming to rise and remain standing. So if you're becoming an adult bat mitzvah, this Shabbat, I'll invite you to rise. Liz, we're so proud of you, and Barbara, who's also going to be joining you tomorrow morning. I know you have some of your classmates here. Any of our, our B'nai Mitzvah class, adult B'nai Mitzvah class, I'll invite you to rise. We want to celebrate you and your classmates as we're uh, celebrating many of your formerly becoming B'nai Mitzvah this Shabbat Mazel Tov. If you're celebrating a birthday this week or in the week ahead, we'll invite you to rise. Happy birthday. If you're celebrating an anniversary this week or in the week ahead, we'll invite you to rise as we say to you, congratulations. If you're worshiping with us for the first time, first time joining us for Central Synagogue's worship, we'll invite you to rise. We're so thrilled that you chose us to celebrate Shabbat with. Friends who are seeing people stand up, make sure you welcome them when you can during the service to our, our community. If you've seen a yellow daffodil or early magnolia with your very own eye, I'll invite you to rise. And if you're just happy to be joining us for the first Shabbat of spring, I'll invite you to rise as we sing our prayer of thanksgiving, our Shechianu. Remain standing as we welcome Rachel and Jake up to the Bima for their Ufruf blessing. Come on. 
Rachel, this, as we were talking about before, this bima is a familiar place for you, though it's been a while since you've been here. You became bat mitzvah here and were confirmed here. And Jake, this is your first time up here. How does it feel? Feels good. Okay, great. It feels good. So almost three years ago in May 2020, you matched on a dating app. And after receiving successful endorsements from mutual friends, your love story began in that most romantic of COVID ways, <laughs> with a FaceTime date. <laughs> Shortly after that, you had your first in-person meeting in Philadelphia, a picnic with wine. And from there, your relationship was off to the races. Speaking of races, over the past three years, one of the things you've loved to do together is run. Indeed, one of the requirements for marrying Rachel was that Jake run a marathon. <laughs> and together with Rachel's dad, you ran the New York Marathon last year. Congrats. <laughs> Rachel, you love Jake's kindness, that he gives so much of himself to friends and family that he goes above and beyond to make you happy. And you love that you have such compatible activity preferences like running, hiking, snowboarding, skiing, and drinking wine. <laughs> Jake, you love Rachel's kindness as well and her warmth. You love how she knows what to say before you know what needs to be said. You love that she's a wartime consigliere. And you love spending time with more, uh, her more than anyone else on the planet because she's your best friend. In July, you will be married in Sun Valley, Idaho, and you've already reached so many finish lines together, and we know that you'll reach many more. And we hope that your chupa is just the beginning of your greatest journey together. And at this time, to mark this special moment on your shared journey, I'm going to offer you our people's most ancient blessing, the priestly benediction. So I'm going to ask you to get nice and close to me here. Yivarech Adonai ve'yishmerecha May God bless you and protect you. Ya'er Adonai panavelecha May the light of God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. God's presence always. And may that give you peace. And together we say, Amen. Mazel tov. Please be seated. I grew up in a small Jewish community of about 300 families in Tacoma, Washington. And my husband, Jacob, also grew up in a small, tight-knit congregation in Burlington, Vermont. And I'm curious how many of you who are here grew up in synagogues in smaller Jewish communities or spent time living in a, in a small-town Jewish community? It's a number of us, really, quite a bit. It's interesting how many of us have made our way here to New York. But I also know that there are many people who grew up at Central or in big Jewish communities like New York and then found their way to smaller Jewish communities because of work or love or, I don't know, a change of life, like snowboarding or something. <laughs> if we want Judaism to thrive in America, we are best served when we have a healthy ecosystem of thriving congregations of all sizes in every corner of our country. I'm honored that tonight one of our people's greatest champions and leaders for small town Jewish life, Rabbi Rachel Isaacs, 
is with us. Rabbi Isaacs holds too many distinctions to name, but I'll name a few. She was ordained from Jewish Theological Seminary with a Wexner Graduate Fellowship. She received the Covenant Foundation's Emerging Jewish Educator Award and forward named her one of America's most inspiring rabbis. Rabbi Isaac leads the congregation in Waterville, Maine, and serves as the founder and the executive director of the Center for Small Town Jewish Life, which began in Maine but now serves the larger country. It's an organization that is transforming the impact and strength of small Jewish communities around the country. In a time when the common narrative is that Judaism is struggling outside of major metropolitan areas, Rabbi Isaacs is helping make sure that with the right leadership and investment and community collaboration, that small town Jewish communities are and can be not only vibrant Jewish centers, and oftentimes the only Jewish content for the whole community, but models for a collaborative, pluralistic, and diverse Jewish future. Her organization is changing the Jewish landscape. And at Central Synagogue, we feel really proud that we have been able to help support some of that work. We are so grateful that you're visiting our community tonight and bringing a message from small town Jewish life. We welcome you, Rabbi Rachel Isaacs. It on. There we go. There we go. Thank you so much. Shabbat Shalom. <clears throat> it's amazing to be here at Central Synagogue, to be in the company of hundreds, if not thousands, throughout the world, celebrating the gift of Shabbat, a day of rest, abundance, and if we're doing it right, real peace. Friday, Yom Hashishi, the sixth day of the week, is the day that we remember God's love through the gift of double portions. We learn in the book of Exodus that on Fridays, God blessed us with a double portion of manna before the setting of the sun, an abundance we had the opportunity to gather so that we, each and every one of us, kol echad ve'echad, could be sated and rested on Shabbat. We learn in Exodus 16:22, "Vayhi b'yom hashishi laktu lechem mishna shneha omer leechad." On the sixth day, they gathered double the amount of food, lechem mishna, two omers leechad, for every individual. You may have noticed that we always bless two uncut loaves of bread for Shabbat meals, known as Lechem Mishnah. And this is why, a remembrance of God's grace in the desert. It didn't matter who we were or if our behaviors were deserving. Each week, God provided us with Shnei HaOmer, two Omers, two portions of food on Friday afternoons, so that everyone would know a day without hunger, without worry, and without toil. Now, if you'd give me the privilege, I want to take you on a journey with me, not to a desert expanse, but rather to a place with a lot more snow, Maine, which is also a place with a different Lechem Mishnah story. It can get really cold in Maine, but it doesn't lack in warmth. In fact, it's one of the warmest places I've ever lived. I want you to close your eyes and go there with me to my home, Waterville, Maine, where I serve as the rabbi of Beth Israel Congregation and the executive director of the Center for Small Town Jewish Life at Colby College. When you walk into the back door of my synagogue, you're always greeted with a faint scent of kosher matzah ball soup mixed with the slightest hint of mildew <laughs> from a 70-year-old building that can't quite manage its moisture anymore. 
And on your left, you'll see the kitchen, the timeless heart and soul of our congregation. It is often where the most invaluable Torah is taught and learned. That happened a few years ago when my wife, Mel, was joined one snowy Saturday night by our rabbinical intern joining us from New York. Mel, he asked, do you always make this many sandwiches for the food pantry? No, she replied. Demand has gone up over the past few years, but we always need to make double at the end of the month. Why, he inquired, should you need to make any more at the end of the month than you do at the beginning. Mill stood there somewhat stunned by a question that should not have felt like a Talmudic riddle. How could he not know? I am sure he knew why we bless two chalot for each Shabbat meal, but why does he not know why we need to make double the number of sandwiches at the end of the month? Most of the soup kitchen guests we serve, some of whom are members of our own congregation, she explained, rely on WIC and EBT, government benefits that are issued at the beginning of each month and that often run out by the end, especially in families with children. Oh, okay, I didn't know that, he said with the humble grace that endeared him so deeply to all of us at Beth Israel. He didn't understand the significance of the double portion at the end of the month, but the truth of the matter is before I came to Waterville, I didn't either. I knew nothing about communities like Waterville. And what I thought I knew was not only wrong, but actually in retrospect, was kind of harmful and offensive. And if I did think about class differences when I lived in New York City, I rarely thought about it in connection to the Jewish community. But my ignorance and the ignorance of my students should not surprise us, because how many of us really honestly talk about class? Not many. What we need to surface this Shabbat is that class isn't just about money. It's a messy alchemy of financial wealth, social connections, political and cultural power, the opportunities one encounters organically in their lifetime, and the communal regard they receive. To put it more concretely, someone can have the money, either having the financial resources or a scholarship, to attend a Jewish summer camp. But class is also knowing which brands everyone at camp is gonna be wearing, where to access those in fashion clothes, and being able to own them. The trickiness of class is what brought one of my main rabbinic colleagues to warn me about sending the kids in my congregation to major Jewish summer camps. Even if you can get them the scholarship, Rachel, she said, the teasing they might endure might not make it worth it. Why aren't we talking about class? The topic is tender because class is inextricably linked with dignity. In Hebrew, the word for dignity is kavod, which shares the same Hebrew root with kaved, which means weighty. Dignity is about how much leverage we have in creating a world that gives us what we need and brings us into spaces with the promise of fullness, respect, and agency. And the inequitable distribution of this kavod is impacting the ability of the American Jewish establishment to sustain functional, holy communities, equitably nationwide. So where can we go from here? First, we must acknowledge that over the past 50 years, 
wealth and social power have been increasingly concentrated in 12 metro areas to the exclusion of large swaths of our nation. By our estimation, one in eight American Jews lives outside one of these major metros. And at the same time, it's very important, we must also see that class disparities exist within every locale. And so, as we plan programs and craft policies as an American Jewish community, I would challenge all of us to ask ourselves and our institutions questions out loud that we don't usually ask. One, who is included and excluded by the price of this event or membership? Two, what services should every member of a Jewish community be able to access regardless of price or geography? Who will provide it? Who will pay those who are providing those services? And will they be paid a fair wage? And three, how do we work to address the pain and shame caused by unacknowledged class differences within our American Jewish community? Not all of these questions have simple answers, but we have to start addressing them. From where I stand, there are three steps we should be taking as an American Jewish community to make our Jewish world more economically equitable now. First, even though live streaming has been a blessing and increased accessibility in crucial ways, it's the reason my congregation I know is here with me through the live stream. Hi, Maine. It's amazing. And yet, we still need to reiterate in all of our communities that live streaming doesn't replace the importance of physical presence. For most of us, to be human is to be embodied, and we cannot let physical presence and contact become a luxury good. Second, it's a little bit out there, but I think every state in America should have, at a bare minimum, one full-time, at-large, pluralistically-oriented rabbi with an endowed salary that serves the entire Jewish community of that state, regardless of ability to donate or pay. Third, we need to find ways to make sure that everyone has a seat at the table so that every Jewish soul is fed. We cannot afford to lose anyone. For many small town rabbis like myself, who travel back and forth regularly between large cities and our small town synagogues, the disparity in surfaces, luxuries, and opportunities we witness between urban communities and our home shoals is striking and often painful. Shoals like ours are struggling to pay their heating bills so that our pipes don't freeze. Our congregants often cannot make rent or pay college application fees. And our shul boards struggle mightily to raise the funds to pay paltry part-time rabbinic salaries. These heroic small town lay leaders work the equivalent of unpaid full-time jobs so that every member of their congregation can have a human hand to hold when life gets real, both during times of transcendent joy, like birth, marriage, and graduation, and also through times of tragedy, like the pains of divorce, children in dire mental health crises, chronic illnesses often exacerbated by poverty and death. The eternal faith of the people Israel is a covenant that should not be contingent upon one's class. It is up to all of us to make sure that every member of our people 
is spiritually sated, held by community, known, and called by name. We need a new American Jewish budget that fulfills the basic birthright of every Jew in this nation, to be served and held as a worthy member of our people. I need to thank Central Synagogue for providing me with the pulpit tonight and for financially supporting the organization I lead, the Center for Small Town Jewish Life, that serves small communities like Beth Israel nationally. When I first approached the central clergy team to support our work with small communities, they answered the call immediately, partnering with us not only financially, but as thought partners in building community and capacity through the neighborhood and my organization's programs. Two other Manhattan synagogues, Road of Sholom and Park Avenue, came in alongside them, eager to help us spread the story of small town Jewish life and advance our mission. But there is so much more to be done on a strategic national scale to ensure that we are touching and serving every member of the American Jewish community with dignity. We will need to continue this work together, large and small congregations alike. And now, from those lofty theoretical heights, I want to bring you back down home to Waterville. You are all invited. We will make room, I promise. You are all invited to join us for one of our Shabbat potlucks with Lechem Mishnah, a double portion of Barbara's homemade challah dotted with aniseed, and Liz's famous and beloved kugel, and Nilda's delicious arepas. Nothing is fancy, but everyone who enters leaves full. Those two simple facts are related. In this Shabbat to come, let's dream of Lechem Mishnah, a double portion for all. And then, when Shabbat ends and the week begins, let's start ensuring that everyone, at the very least, has the flour for a single loaf. As our rabbis teach, Ein Kemach, Ein Torah, without flour, without physical sustenance, our Torah cannot live. You know, we Jews, we've always shared a story, the story, Torah. But now all of us here today share another story, a story about a small place that made me love being a rabbi, the place where I learned and now teach about double portions, where, with all of our help, Torah will continue to live. Shabbat Shalom. I just want to say that Rabbi Isaacs, is my, is my on, um, you could have served any community in the country, and you chose to make your rabbinate to serve those who are most underserved. And you've given us a double portion, both a challenge to step up, and the second is a vision of a world where all Jews can be served that need to be served. So thank you for that, and thank you for joining us tonight. And hello, Waterville. We'll rise and turn to page 282 in the middle of our prayer book for Alenu. Thank you. 
Please be seated. You can join on page 291 as I read this beautiful poem by and, um, remind me to Hanasanesh, yes. I to make sure I got it right. Um, at the bottom of the page. She wrote, Yesh Kochavim, there are stars up above. So far away we see their light, long, long after the star itself is gone. And so it is with people that we loved. Their memories keep shining ever brightly, though their time with us is done. And the stars that light up the darkest of nights, these are the lights that guide us. As we live our days, these are the ways we remember. The Shabbat we remember with love, dear ones who have died in recent days, Philip Basser, Paul Corwin, and Gresser, Michael Grunbaum, Ed Herbst, Debbie Lang, Richard Marlin, Larry Runninghawk, Madeline Scheitlin, Scheitkin, Leonore Siegel, excuse me, Lenore Siegel, and Hazel Weinberger. And we remember loved ones whose yard sites occur at this season, Carol Grossman Abramson, Rose Astor, Arthur Barnett, Robert Bell, Helma Berger, Hyman Berger, David Bloom, David Blum, Margo Bokovsa, Mary Schwartz Buckman, Susan Buxbaum, Cindy Buis, Carol May Catchpool, Arthur Sarasino, Hyman Channon, Julius Cohen, Richard Cohen, Stan Cohen, Sarah Cuba, Evelyn Daniels, Thelma D'Souza Jared, excuse me, Gerard, Seymour Duell, Lillian Eigen, David Fellner, Antoinette Figatner, Mark Finkelstein, Ethel Frybrand, Michael Garrell, Ruth Geyer, Connie Ginniger, Gertrude Gleckel, Nathan Goldwasser, Jay Gottlieb, Jacob Graham, Martin Halperin, Merle Harris, Laura Harwood, Hortense Helfenbein, Robert Helfenbein, Robert Himes, Jonathan Jacob, Barnett Jason, Gloria Jordan, Shirley Kahan, Erwin Kanner, Henrietta Kastanowitz, Leona Biersuk Katz, Peter Klemperer, Dana Coplin, Ruth Koster, Alexandra Langer, Aline Legger, Estelle Leibowitz, Sylvia Knopf Levitt, Irene Lawrence, Faye Marco, Mayor Middleman, Shirley Moss, Sally Mound, Rose Orenberg, Sylvia Oxenberg, Raymond Pelowitz, Richard Poles, Henrietta, Henrietta Poses, Larry Racefield, Herbert Rhine, David Roth, Florence Rubinstein, Julian Sandler, Joseph Seitao, Ben Schnitzer, Shirley Schussman, Ruth Siegel, Muriel Silberstein, Martin I. Silverman, Stanford Silvershots, Paul Silverstein, Jacob Sklar, Estelle Summers, Marvin Stemple, Betty Stern Green, Manuel Straker, Edward Weil, and Sarah Weinstein. And if you're observing a yard site or a recent death that I did not mention, I'll invite you to share the name of your loved one aloud at this time. 
if it's within the first week of the death of your loved one, I invite you to rise in loving honor of them. If it's within the first month since the passing of your loved one, I invite you to rise. If it's within the year since the death of your dear one, I invite you to rise. And if you're observing a yard site this Shabbat, please rise. And I'll invite the entire congregation to join those standing. I'm going to add one more name, Frank L. Levine. To all these names, to all the stars that continue to light up our lives, we say zikhonam livracha, their memories will be for blessing. As we turn to page 294 and recite together, these sacred words of mourners Kaddish. Yitkadav Yitkadash Shemei Rabbah B'yomah divrach yirutei v'yamlich machvitei B'chayachon v'yomachon V'chayi d'chol b'yit Yisrael V'agala uzman kari v'yimru Amen. Yehei Shemei Rabbah M'varach le'olam O'me Almaya Yitbarach v'yishtabach v'yipar v'yitnaseya Viet Hadar, Viet Talev, Viet Talal, Shemei de Kudsha, Brichu, Leila Min Kol Brichata, Vishirata, Chush Brichata, Venechamata, Damiram, Yama, Vimru, Amen. Yehei Shlama Rabba Min Shemaya, Vachayim Alinu Veoko Yisrael, Vimru, Amen. O Se Shalom Vimromav, Hu Ya Se Shalom, Alinu Veoko Yisrael, Vimru, Amen. Shalom, shalom, Bibromav. Who ya se shalom ale? Wonderful to be with everyone tonight. So glad to be together for Shabbat following the services. If you're here in the sanctuary, hope you'll join myself and Rabbi Lorge downstairs in our pavilion for our Onik Shabbat. Our clergy at the very end will also go to the back for those um, who are not going downstairs so you can greet us and we can greet you and wish each other a Shabbat Shalom if you wish. Tomorrow morning services will continue here in our sanctuary where Liz and Barbara will help lead service as adult benot mitzvah, and we hope you'll join us for those services. And if you'd like to find more information about our upcoming Passover celebrations, including our congregational first night Seder here at Central Synagogue, please visit our website. We're so looking forward to the holiday together. Now, I, we have a, many kids in our community on vacation this week, but I know there's some kids here. I saw Jake way in the background. Maybe there's some others here. We'd love for you to come forward and join us as we prepare to bless the challah and the wine. The Kiddush can be found on page five of our prayer books. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, borei peri hagafen. Baruch atzadonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher kitshonu b'mitzvotam v'ratzavanu. V'shabbat kotsho b'ahava v'ratzon hinchilanu, zikaron l'maase v'reshit. Ki hu yom tehila l'mikra et kodesh, zeichel itziyan,
please join us for our closing song on page 321. I don't know that I share my love. It's a report, it's a report. It ain't a sabbath, it's so cold. As I'm a lechemon, it's a